Here is my tiny chunk of the ocean. It has coral, starfish, a sea cucumber, and even hermit crabs. Today, I'm going to show you step by step how I built this tank. My goal is to prove to you that reef keeping can be simple and done on a budget. So let's get straight into the build. For this setup, I'll be using a three gallon tank, a filter, light, and heater. That is all the hardware you're gonna need. The tank that you choose isn't all that important, but I wouldn't go below three gallons. That's the size I'm using, but you can always go bigger. For water movement, I'm using a canister filter. These are great because they are very, very quiet. The light I'm using is a basic gooseneck, which is inexpensive and great quality. Total win. And finally, the last piece of equipment is the heater. It may be tiny, but it packs a punch. And to clarify, there are links to everything I used in the description below. All right, now onto the rock work. The majority of corals cannot grow on sand and actually need a solid surface in order to grow. Here's where the rock comes in. These are called Marco rocks and they come from Florida. They are super easy to build with and I stack them on top of each other. In my experience, it's easier to stack the rocks outside the tank rather than inside. I stack them on a piece of cardboard on my desk. To prevent the rocks from collapsing, I use some super glue. This is completely safe for fishing coral as it dries inert. I sprinkle some rock dust over the glue in order to hide it. The final structure was full of holes and arches, providing a lot of surface area for coral and future animals. Now, the whole scape was pretty dusty, so I brought it outside to hose it down. I wanted to make sure the rocks were clean before I added them into the tank. Otherwise, the water may become cloudy. After washing them off, I carefully placed the finished hardscape into the tank. I also clipped on the light so I can get an idea of how everything was going to look. Perfect. The tank was finally coming together and now it was ready for the heater. I started by placing the heater in the back of the tank. I squeezed it behind all the rock work to make sure it stays hidden. From the front of the tank, it is completely invisible and you wouldn't even know it's there. So now, I was ready to add in the sand. The sand I'm using is called live sand. Basically, it is packaged in salt water and it has already been colonized with all kinds of beneficial bacteria. I take the sand and carefully add it to the tank. I aim for a layer that's between 1 to 2 inches thick. I like to go a little heavy on the sand, but it is really up to you. With that all in place, it was time to set up the filter. I began by building the intake and output. It was just a matter of snapping the pieces together. On the canister filter itself, I removed the lid and placed sponges in the first two sections. I also poured in salt water so I can add established media from another reef tank of mine. The filter was looking pretty good, but I wanted to add one more thing. I placed in a small bag of carbon, which is great for any fish tank in general. It can remove impurities and toxins that may find their way into the water. Now with that in place, I could close off the lid and move on to the final step. I placed the intake and output onto the tank. I connected them to a filter with some hosing and then the tank was ready for water. I slowly filled it up, but it immediately became a cloudy mess. Don't worry if this happens to you and it is completely normal. So I plugged in the filter and at first it sprayed out a bunch of air bubbles. After about a minute, the filter was working perfectly and the bubbles were gone. Because the tank was so cloudy, I let it run overnight to clear up. The following morning, the tank looked crystal clear. I was really happy with the way it turned out and now it was time for the coral. I carefully cut open their packaging. One by one, I placed them in the aquarium. I wanted to work quickly so I didn't get it all on film. Corals are very sensitive and they've already been through a lot of stress while shipping. In addition to the corals, I added in some macroalgae. Macroalgae is the saltwater equivalent to a plant. They will act as a nutrient sponge and soak up most of the nasties in an aquarium. Here's how the tank looked the following day. Many of the corals looked amazing as they waved in the current. The most amazing thing to me is the way they eat. Here, I'm feeding one of the corals some phytoplankton. It is just so awesome to watch. Many of you are probably wondering the care for a tank like this. Well, the upkeep is actually pretty minimal. When water evaporates, I top it off with some distilled water. I also feed the corals once every week or so, but that's it. To be honest, I don't even do water changes. I have done zero since I set up the tank and it has been running for over two months now. There were now all kinds of animals in the tank. Many of you are probably wondering how the tank is doing so well without any water changes. Well, I rely on the heavy amount of macroalgae to suck up all the waste in the water. 
If you want to learn more about these and all the animals, please do me a solid and like this video because the algorithm doesn't usually like videos like these. If this video does well, I will definitely make an update on this video in the future. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Later.